Good morning. It is good to, uh, to be with you, whether you're here or joining us live streaming. Appreciate you all coming in and uh, last, last day of the Thanksgiving holiday and listening to what, how a conference treasurer can preach. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Thou who art over us, Thou who art one of us, Thou who art, grant us a pure heart that we may see Thee, a humble heart that we may hear Thee, a heart of love that we may serve Thee, a heart of faith that we may always abide in Thee. Amen. I don't know about you, but here lately there have been many times that I really needed God to act. Needed God to intervene into our world and into our history with, with great power and change. Do something. Now I can go through a whole array of where was God when. We have these mass shootings that are almost weekly occurring here in our country. The superpower Russia bombing the, and destroying the much less powerful nation of Ukraine. There's p poverty, there's hunger, disease, oppression, abuse, rampant. Even here in our own nation, the most prosperous on the planet. And if the recent election did not reveal how most, almost split down the middle our very country is. Pray tell what will. Yeah, I, I just, I didn't need God to do something. Is that blasphemous? Am I bordering on heresy? But come on, aren't there some of you out there who would probably really wish the same thing today? My pre one of my previous congregations, I was with a family who had just lost their 20-year-old daughter to cancer. And her father asked me, why didn't God save my little girl? I've never forgotten that. And then there was this woman, this woman who had just won the lottery. And she was jumping up and down, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Well, if Jesus is handing out lottery winnings, I won't mind. Not long ago, here in Charlotte, there was a school bus wreck, which several children were hurt. One of the parents who had escaped injury was shown on television news that night, but God was looking out for my, my young child. Was God not looking out for the ones that got hurt? Today's the first Sunday of Advent. And we get that glorious time, as the song says, the most wonderful time of year. But Advent, my friends, Advent is not just a prelude to Christmas. It does stand alone by itself with deep meaning and purpose. Sometimes I, I, sometimes I wish Advent didn't come just before Christmas. We might better understand it, appreciate it. You know, the season of Pentecost, for instance, is so long from Trinity Sunday in June all the way to Christ the King Sunday in November. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just drop Advent in the middle of that and give us a little anticipation? But I'm not in charge of the liturgical cycle. Advent, truly understood though, has a twofold scheme. First, there's the era of prophecy, where the Jewish people eagerly anticipated the intervening of God into the world. The passage in Isaiah we heard one moment ago foretold of a time when God's people would know peace, God's people would know prosperity. We all know that that was resembling the this, the, the coming of the Messiah as the one who would redeem, liberate. And for so long, like, like us, I suppose, the Jewish nation eagerly expected God to break through history 
and right all the wrongs and cure all the ills. Now on this side of history, we Christians celebrate that God did break through with the incarnation of Jesus, born in Bethlehem, and Jesus fulfilled those Old Testament prophetic utterances, at least, at least as a start. But if anything on this side of Advent, we all know that it's not finished, not done yet. And so Advent also holds another, albeit oft-neglected, component. Advent also foretells when Jesus will return to this world and finish God's work. The church will be made triumphant and time will deliver a new era. But it sounds an awful lot like what the Jewish people were expecting the first time around. The Jewish nation couldn't comprehend Jesus Christ as the Messiah. You see, they were looking for a new Moses or a new David. Not a child in a manger in a know-nothing town like Bethlehem. But it was God's way. God's way to send Jesus. This, this humble baby who would grow up to be a humble servant. To suffer. To die on the cross. And to be raised from the tomb to show God's love. It was God's way that Jesus was not a militaristic savior or some charismatic king. It was God's way that Jesus would surround himself with common, ordinary day people. And the Jews of Jesus' day forgot that Moses was a murderer. And David was an adulterer. And yet God used them in the same way God used Jesus. So maybe in this passage we have with Matthew, Jesus recognized their wavering. And so he offered this other glimpse into what we call in Advent, that thus just not then, but also today, we want and we do still need God to intervene in a way that will make sense of all the violence, the evil, the plagues of this world. And so we find ourselves in this bridge time between the first advent and the next advent. And maybe, just maybe what God did in Jesus Christ in that first advent is what we need to focus on in this bridge. Yeah, I like to see God break through. But the more I think about it, the more I think that God has never really worked in zaps of manipulating happenstance or changing circumstances. God has worked through humanity. Started with Jesus and continues through us. I once had a conversation with a, a church member of a former appointment, and this just goes to say, be forewarned that any conversation you ever had with a preacher could wind up one day in a sermon. <laughs> but we were talking about the way God works in the world, and he suggested maybe the only way God works in the world is through people. I'm not sure I like that, but it does make you think. You know, it is through people, it's through the church, actually, that hospitals were created as places of healing. It was through Christians starting nursing homes and other places for the elderly and homes for parentless children. It was people through the church that started colleges and universities and schools teaching young people. It was the church that started shelters for the poor, soup kitchens for the hungry, and offering ch charity and compassion for those in prison. 
And so maybe, and, and we already are seeing it. It was human beings that came up with the cure for polio. And we're working on cures for COVID. And one day, maybe even cures for cancer and diabetes. Maybe, just maybe, the world's solution, such as world hunger, could be solved if nations of prosperity would seek ways to get food and teach agriculture to the nations of want. God has given us our intellect. God has given us our passion. God has given us our thirst for justice and equity. How will we use them in this bridge time? It's that time of year, I guess you've already seen, where at least daily on some channel somewhere, you can see the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, right? I already saw it once yesterday. But I love that movie. Had such a deep kernel of truth. You know, if it wasn't, as if it were not for George Bailey, his brother Harry would have died, and then the whole squadron that Harry was to save during the war. If it weren't for George Bailey, the druggist would have sent poison to his customer. If it weren't for George Bailey, the old clothes factory with out of work townsfolk would have not become the new plastics factory for Sam, Sam Rainwright and all the new jobs. If it weren't for George Bailey, the building and loan shareholders will have all lost out selling to old man Potter. If it weren't for George Bailey, how many Bedford Fall residents will have lived and died in Potter's ghetto? And least, not least of all, if it weren't for George Bailey, Clarence would have never gotten his wings. Well, you get my point. If you don't, go home today and find it somewhere and watch the movie. Advent is a time, I think, of expectancy. And it can become realized, it can become realized in this time of year, at this time of season, as we move from when Jesus came to when Jesus shall come again. And we can live it out in the, what God started in Jesus as we move toward completion. Advent first revealed that Jesus was the best of God. And Jesus revealed that we are at our best when we live as he did. I want to share two examples of what I'm talking about. One of the more significant individuals in my life was my great aunt Leona. I called her Aunt Own because as a baby or a child, I had trouble pronouncing Leona. Upon hearing about Aunt Own, one of my friends asked me if I had an uncle off. <laughs> I replied, who knows, my cousin's been marrying each other for generations. Anon was my, my grandmother's younger sister, born in 1907. I never knew any of my grandparents, so Anon became my de facto grandmother. She loved me the moment I was born over all the other cousins. She was a fabulous cook, could make one of the best chocolate pies you ever eat. She had a crazy saying that when she heard something startling, she would say, I hope my die. I have never understood that saying, but she said it all the time. When Anon was five years old, she suffered an accident and her leg was crushed in which she had to have it amputated just above the knee. And so for the rest of her life, she would have to walk with a crutch. She could not have children because of that accident. But when her younger sister, my Aunt Mary, died of a brain tumor, leaving a very young daughter whose father had abandoned them, Anon and Uncle Joe took her in and raised her as her own. Whenever I would come home from college, I would have to go see Anon. And in those times, as a young college student, I was frustrated, I was overwhelmed, I felt defeated. She always encouraged me, reminded me of the destiny that one of these days, I was going to be a preacher. She was a humble mill worker who would probably say her life didn't really matter much. 
that matter to me. And it made a difference for me as I stand before you today. And then there's this story. It's one of my favorite stories. It's an old story. John was a freshman in high school. And one day he saw a kid walking from, uh, walking from home from class and he was carrying, it looked like, every single textbook the school had. Some boys rushed up to him and knocked him down, sending his books all over the place. His glasses flew across the yard. John felt compassion and went over to him. He said, those guys are such jerks. I wish they'd get their own life. The young boy's name was Kyle. John helped Kyle up. He gave him his books and carried some of his own, gave him his glasses, and he noticed, he noticed when Kyle put his glasses on, there were tears. The two of them started walking home together and discovered they did not live that far from each other. The more they talked, the more things they had in common. And for the next four years, John and Kyle became the best of friends. As graduation day neared, John was a, an athlete for the school and a star uh, football player. And Kyle was going to be class valedictorian. And he would give the commencement speech. And as he stood before the, his peers, he, became, he had become a young man of great respect. And he started his speech, he cleared his throat, and he said, Graduation is a time to thank those who have helped you make it through some tough years. Your parents, your teachers, a coach, but mostly your friends. And I'm here to tell you all that being a friend to someone is the best gift you may offer. You see, four years ago, one weekend, I planned to go home and take my own life. I was tired of the bullying and the heckling that I was always receiving from everyone. I cleaned out my locker that day so my mom would not have to come to school and do it later. I was carrying all my stuff home. And then he stopped. He looked hard at John and smiled. But that day, that day, thankfully, a new friend entered into my life and stopped me from doing the unthinkable. Never underestimate, he concluded, the power of an impact you might make on someone's life. Advent starts today. Christmas is going to come in its good time fast enough, but what the world needs, what you and I need is to be the people of God. Anticipating that time when Jesus first came with expectancy and anticipating that time when Jesus will come again with expectancy. But in the meantime, continue to do the work that Jesus started. And we will see God at work. We will see God bringing creation to all fulfillment. Maybe. Just maybe, God already is. Amen.